Punk. Hello, how's it going? It's going good. We're looking at every limited card. Um, I, These are listed in alphabetical order. And I will not go into great detail on why some of them are limited. But for the more different ones, I will. So starting off, we've got a hero lives. I feel like it should be really obvious why a hero lives is here. This is a free special summon of literally any he uh, any e-hero monster. Uh, and there is an e-hero that searches any hero monster. So it is a one card full combo for heroes. That's really strong. Uh, it doesn't even matter if it cuts your life points in half. It is very strong. Um, that being say, that being said, it could come back to two or three, I think. It's, a hero lives is really strong, but I have yet to believe that heroes is as broken as people think it is. So, I don't know. I feel like if this is the card that was unlimited and malicious wasn't, Heroes would probably still be as playable. Um, yeah. Uh, Armageddon Knight. I don't feel like I need to explain this. FTKs should stay where it is. Maybe should be banned, but should stay what it is where it is for now. Um, Beatrice Lady of the Eternal was a hit to BA back in the day. And nowadays stays limited, not because of BA, but because of every other deck in the game that uses Beatrice. Um, I feel like if other cards, if a lot of other cards were limited, Beatrice could come back to three. Uh, I don't think there's a difference between, there's not a big difference between one Beatrice and three Beatrices. But maybe for now she should stay where she is. Just because she's seeing play in Drytron. Um, the Chaos Dragons are really broken. I feel like both of them should stay where they are. Where is Light Pulse? Or Light... Uh, where's the Light one? The Light one is on here somewhere too. And I uh, don't know where it is. I cannot see it. If that is like literally the one card I missed, I would be I would not be surprised. And if I did miss it, just know it is right there with us. This is right leg. No. Left arm, left leg. So it should be almost over here somewhere, but it's not. So it's, which means I missed it. So yeah. Oh no no. It's White Dragon Wyver Burster. There it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've got all the Exodia shit. That's not what I was looking for. You just heard you just heard me say White Dragon Wyver Burster. Well, it's odd that you were talking about the limbs of Exodia while looking for it. Yes, because I forgot the name of White Dragon Wyver Burster for a minute. Because um, I always get it mixed up with a different card. Oh, I just watched an Insector deck using the fucking... Okay. Unit. How many negates mm -hmm. do you think that put up consistently? How many? About five to seven. Okay. With like one to two card, but it took mm -hmm. about 30 minutes to do the combo. <laughs> okay, so... Did they make a 30 minute turn? I feel like these two need to stay where they are. Uh, if one or the other was banned, which will never happen, but if one or the other was banned, maybe. But the baby, the baby chaos dragons, as some people call them, are really good extenders, and they're incredibly searchable nowadays. And they set up so many decks that it's it's just not worth it to even consider bringing them back in any way, shape, or form at the moment. Called by the Grave is a card that I see a lot of people say should come back. I honestly think if they never, if they never, uh, like, release, uh, Crossout Designator, this card can stay where it is. But if they release Crossout Designator, um, Crossout Designator would need to be limited in some way for, uh, Called by the Grave to stick stick around um card of destruction is really powerful it should probably stay where it is we don't need dad format 2.0 and i know that there are some decks that will really fucking abuse uh card of destruction uh card of demise if literally 
every Sky Striker and every True Draco card were banned, Card of Demise could come back. But that's unrealistic, so it's staying where it's at. Uh, Chain Strike is an interesting one. Hmm. You know, I really feel like Chain Strike isn't that bad. Not at least anymore. Chain Strike is a, is a card that says only activate as Link 2 or higher. Inflict 400 damage to your opponent uh, times the Link, uh, the Chain Link number of this card. You cannot activate uh, this card if multiple cards uh, slash effects with the same name are in chain. Um, fair trade-off, to be honest. Fair trade-off? Yeah, I'd say it's a fair trade-off. If g Give us Card of Demise back, ban every True Draco and uh, Sky Striker card. That's how we get uh, Card of Demise back. Um... I really don't think... I, I honestly think Chain Strike could be experimented with at multiple copies. I can't think of an FTK that would work with... I, I can't think of an FTK that would work with Chain Burn nowadays. Uh, so I think Chain Burn would just be a really annoying deck rather than a really powerful deck. Ban every Drytron card and bring back Benton. Yes, if you banned every Drytron card, you could bring back Benton. Definitely. That if you banned Herald of uh, Herald of Perfection and Herald of Ultimateness, you could bring back Benton probably, but maybe not, cause like, um, actually, but maybe not, cause like the Drytron shit was what uh, the Drytron shit was what uh, caused like in the OCG they just stopped running Herald of Ultimateness and Herald of Perfection and started running the Drytron shit and. Uh, the Drytron shit, uh, still sees play. Uh, I don't think, I honestly don't think Ben 10 can come back with the Drytron stuff still around. Uh, if the Drytron shit were banned, um, I don't know, because Drytron would still be a, a ridiculous engine with just Ben 10. Uh... How you doing, bro? <laughs> nice to see you, Envy. Ben 10. This card's name is Cyber Angel Ben 10. Envy, this is a GX card. This is an anime card. This was Ben 10 before Ben 10. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. <laughs> How have I not seen that joke, mate? You haven't seen that- Wait, animal. Animal. You've not seen Haha -ha Ben 10 more like Ben 1? This was a joke that people were making after Ben 10 got limited. Animal, how did you not know about that? Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Mm, this was like Alexis's. This was like one of Alexis's main cards in the anime. And Envy is a GX character confirmed. Exactly. No, Envy is definitely a GX character. Have you seen that hair? No, I haven't. Funnily enough, it's weird because I've been bin binge watching Ben Ten these past days, uh, these past uh, few days. Hmm. <laughs> All right. There are FTKs involving this card. This card should maybe be banned, honestly, but I think it's fine at one because it's not seeing any play. Dude, Exodia at three would make Exodia brick. Uh, would make Exodia decks brick 24/7. Here, I, I actually, I wanted to show you guys this. I had a had an idea for Exodia. This is how I choose to handle Exodia. This is how I choose to handle Exodia. Where where are the pieces? Okay, so there's you. There's you. There. This is how I choose to handle Exodia. 
Exodia should not be banned. Uh, should not be limited. But we know for a fact that Exodia was limited for lore reasons. Make Ben 10 great again. Free Jet Synchro. <laughs> oh my god. There's an entire uh, combo that uses its effect without paying life points. Yep, lore. That's the only reason it's limited. People weren't playing it before this card got limited. Um, okay. So, Digusto Emerald is actually limited for loops reasons. And since it is limited for loops reasons, it should probably stay limited for those same reasons. Um... Okay, interesting fact. I think if they ban one of the three of these, the others can come back at two. The only reason each of these cards is limited is that because of their interactions with each other, it makes them a little bit too um, special. But at the same time, I feel like they could all just come back to two or three and nobody would care. Uh, because Nibiru exists. And you'd have to get really fucking lucky to not get nibbed. Like, if we're being honest. Like, who's really that afraid of deep draw in 2022? Or sorry, in 2021. Emerald, uh, I don't think does much these days. Well, you've got to understand that Emerald doesn't say you can't recycle back the Emerald. So, uh, back in the day, Emerald was banned because, uh, Zodiac was able to cycle through, like, four to five Emeralds in one turn, uh, getting draws and, uh, cycling resources. So, having Emerald at one so that you can't cycle back the Emerald will prevent the card it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Saryuja. It's around to prevent, it's around at one to prevent people from abusing it at any more than one. <laughs> he might be banned by the time Master Duel comes out. Mm. Uh... So, the Warrior Die Greffer. Or, sorry, uh, Dark Greffer. My bad. Uh, why is Dark, why is Dark Greffer still limited, by the way? He requires you to neg one to do Armageddon Knight. He is a factually worse Armageddon Knight. Uh, I, I just, I don't think the card is gonna see that much play at three. I know that there are some decks that will consider using him, like maybe Orcus would consider using him if he was at three. Same thing with maybe, like, Phantom Knights, but I just don't think these decks need Digreffer anymore. <laughs> Fair. Um... Let's see. Uh, I don't think Dimensional Fissure. I'm just going to put all of the macro cards over here. Because macro is an incredibly annoying floodgate. So, I think the fact... Here's why I don't think macro nor defissure is ever coming back to more than one copy. 90% of rogue decks cannot play through either of these cards. And D shifter exists. And D Shifter is worse macro slash uh, uh, dimensional barrier. So they're not coming back. Even if Dimension Shifter in some wild fantasy. Sorry, why was uh why was Dark Greffer banned, by the way? Oh, Dark Greffer. Dark Greffer was limited because of uh well, they just kind of limited all of the parts of Dark Warrior. So remember, they they hit Armageddon Knight. They hit Mali. They hit uh, Dark Greffer. And then they also 
a rotted uh, uh, plague spreader. So they hit all four parts of that deck. So that Dark Warrior Synchro slash Dark Warrior Link wasn't as viable. Um, and then they banned the payoff for it by banning... Uh, Uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Rongo Mimiid. So it kind of felt like a shot in the foot. Um. Isolde makes every good warrior into an FTK. That's true. I just don't think that... I just don't think that you could call, Di uh, like, Dark Greffer a good warrior anymore. He requires you to have a Dark Warrior in hand to mi to... to mill a dark card or he requires you to have a dark card in hand to mill a dark card from deck this card was limited so that mali could stay it too and i don't think that people are going to use it um in today's meta with mali anymore um dark warrior is not going to be a thing uh i honestly think that this is the next card we get from True Draco back. If we get anything from True Draco back. Uh, cause they... They are definitely not giving us Diagram without Dynamite Band. Um, this is not happening. Uh, and I honestly think Diagram should stay where it is. Cause Diagram is like a... A plus two essentially sometimes a plus a plus three in uh true draco so i think dynamite dynamite can stay where he is is that dynamite yeah that's dynamite or sorry dynamite can come back to two or three just because this card is limited and i would like to see what dynamite does at two or th i would like to see what true draco does with two or three dynamites um, I, I'd, I'd actually greatly enjoy seeing what, uh, True Draco did, does, with more copies of, uh, the one reason to play them nowadays. Um, which is, like, this is, this is the reason why you play the deck. Dynamite is the, the payoff. More or less. So having more copies of him would be very good. I don't even know if the deck would play him at three. I think they would play less copies of cards just so that they could run more dynamite. Thank you for the follow, trust bruh. Nice to see ya. Ah, uh, Pankara! Pankara can stay where Pankara is. As much as I love Pankara, and as much as I would love to play three Pankara again in every one of my side decks... For the low, low cost of five cents. Because Pankra was printed 25 times. Pankra's a little too good. I'm, a, I'm gonna be honest. I'll be the one to say it. Pankra Tops is a little too good. Pankra Tops is one of my favorite cards of all time. Because I just ran it in everything. And crashed into a card. And popped a card from the back row. Or popped a monster. It's a little too strong. Just a tad bit. I would love to see what dinosaurs would do with three pancreatops. I would too. But at the same time... Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe Pankra can come back in a misc at one world. But that's not why Pankra was limited. Pankra was limited because it was really strong. Uh, Divined Wind of Mist Valley... See, this is one of those things where I'm like, this card should probably stay where it is because it's, like, really generic. And it's just, if a wind monster returns to hand, uh, summon a wind monster from the deck. That's really strong. It's really generic. But at the same time, I can't even remember why this card was limited in the first place. And wind decks have kind of evolved past the point of bouncing cards back to hand. Um, 
I think this was used in combination with uh, Gen X Ally Birdman. But I could be wrong. Um, True Draco Face Off should not be limited. Um, e Telly is limited because of specifically um, Virtual World. But Virtual World bricks like a motherfucker. And Virtual World is probably gonna get hit, like some sort of hit on the next ban list. So a good way to balance out Virtual World, getting that hit, would be to give us back e -Telly at 3. Or maybe 2. I'll take 2. Um. Yeah, I, I think, I think, I've always thought that this card could probably come back in some way, shape, or form. Psychic decks are not good. Uh, one extra e -Telly is, one or two extra e -Tellies isn't going to make them good, but it'll certainly give them help. No, I think this card shouldn't exist. I think fundamentally a card that says you win in 20 turns shouldn't exist. At the same time, maybe it should stay limited, but do we all want to live in a world where a Mystic Mind player can wait on it can wait for 20 turns and just win? Do we really? Because Krebons. Wasn't uh, Itali hit long before World... Yeah, it was hit because of Krebons. Because it's funny, JK. <laughs> um, This can stay where it is without an errata. I should have like put on here like a middle one that said... If it has an errata, it can come back. But that's like 90% of the list, to be honest with you. Like a lot of these cards, like Armageddon Knight could come back with an errata. That just said once per turn. But that wouldn't be fun. Um, Gateway to the 6. If they banned... I'm not gonna lie. If they... If they banned or limited... The new... Uh, 6 Sam card... This card could come back. Uh, no, this isn't Final Countdown. It should be banned. It's that Mystic Mind should be banned. Well, yeah, 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 but Final Countdown cannot come back. Uh, what new Six Sam card? Six Sam, uh, Six Samurai got a link to that searches out Gateway. That's, I think if they limited or banned that card, Gateway could come back to three, probably. Yeah, that's why, that's why it got limited in the OCG, was because it was searchable all of a sudden. Uh, let's see. Master Diamond. I actually think Master Diamond can come back in a post-block world world. Uh, in a post-block dragon world, I feel like Master Diamond can come back. Uh, genuinely, I feel like post the banning of block dragon, uh, which was one of the big reasons that uh, Master Diamond was banned, I feel like this card can come back. Uh... It's, it's strong, but what is Gem Knight going to do without Block Dragon and with three Master Diamond? OTK a little bit better? Play through one hand trap? I Wait, they can't. If, if they Ash Rescue Rabbit, you lose the game. Um, I just don't think this deck, uh... I don't think it's it's gonna yeah. Um This is a weird one. I honestly don't I, I honestly don't want uh Gem Knight FTK is a huge cope deck. It really is a huge cope deck. Um I don't wanna see missed uh I don't wanna see this guy come back because of FTK reasons. Um but at the same time, if we banned Armageddon Knight, he could 100... If we banned Armageddon Knight or, uh... 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 Isolde. This card could come back. If we got rid of, like, all the FTK cards, like, Cannon Soldier and the likes, stop. 
It could come back. Same thing with armor, to be honest. If we banned Isolde, armor can come back. Probably. It is a little too generic, though. Um, throw Thunder Dragon a bone, please. Wait, how does that work? How does that work? Uh, I believe this was a card that was used to recycle Armageddon Knight or something. I forget what uh, this card was used in, but it is used in an FTK. And if they just banned FTK cards, the card could probably come back. I forget what exactly it was used to recur, but it was used to recur a card. Because uh, it bounces a card. Pitch uh, Birdman with Armageddon. No, 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 no. You, Birdman is like a, a winged beast, right? So you used uh, Birdman. Birdman's effect bounces a card, remember? Gen X ally Birdman. Return one face-up monster you control to the hand. Special summon this card from your hand. So you used it to recur a card to hand. Uh, it was because of the Miss Valley FDK. Wait, it was because of the Miss Valley FDK. Um... Miss Valley. Oh, with, uh, with, uh, Divine Wind. Hold on. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I don't know. Maybe it could just come back then. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave it in the could come back if other cards were banned, though. It's a machined. It's a, yeah, I just realized that. Um. Harpy's Feather Duster is an interesting one. I feel like back row decks are a little bit too strong right now. If I'm honest with you. Oh, never mind then. If it, if it abused Tomahawk, then it can probably come back. Tomahawk is never coming back. Um. Yeah, it can miss out like, uh. It can currently come back, yeah. Uh, I feel like this card... This might be just me. But we're not seeing that many people running this card. Um. And I feel like if it was at 3, more people would run the card just to out back row. Uh, and with King of the Sky Prison coming and being able to protect set cards... This card is not even going to be that good anymore. Like, people will drop this card for evenly matched when that card comes out. Because back row decks are just going to run King of the Sky Prison. So, uh... Yeah, I think, I think the card... I think the card would not be super broken at 3. Uh, I will say... Uh, Raigeki can probably stay where it is, though. Uh. R Raigeki is really strong. Um. Some decks just don't have an out to it. Uh, the fact that it's not once per turn is pretty annoying, too. Um. It's not like... It's, it's not like Harpy's Feather Duster that sometimes dead in hand because some decks just don't run back row anymore. Uh, and it's not like Harvey's Feather Duster where there is a card coming out that specifically counters the existence of this card. Uh, every deck needs monsters. Every deck. Except for maybe Chain Burn. Needs monsters. Raigeki just says lol no monsters. So, pretty strong if you ask me. Uh, Io. Fuck Sky Striker. <laughs> Fuck Spell Decks. Yeah, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, if, eh, well... Yeah, I feel like the maintenance cost on IO is really, uh... Feather Duster could come back. Lightning Storm still exists. 
Uh... <laughs> Lightning storm, huh? Mm. Would people still... Here's the question. Would people still run Lightning Storm? That's a lousy opinion, by the way. I know. Uh, it actually probably can't come back. Uh, the card is really strong, even if the maintenance cost is the, the uh, one of the bigger maintenance costs in the game. It's really hard to out IO. Uh, it's really hard to out IO uh, for most decks, because most decks run spell, spell and trap removal and not trap, trap removal. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh would have to shift greatly for this card to not be a problem. So, perhaps keep Io where it is. Although, I do think it's funny to say fuck Sky Striker. Because if this existed at 3, Sky Striker would not. Um. But Floodgates are not fun to play against. Um, let's see. Nah, Infernity Archfiend can stay where it is. Same thing with Infernity Launcher. Uh, where's Launcher? The effectiveness and popularity of King of the Sky Prison will it will affect how uh, Storm Slash Dust Duster is utilized. That is very true. Especially since it can protect Io. Uh, it cannot protect Io. It only protects set cards. I can protect Io while Io is face down. Where the fuck did I put, uh... Oh, it's right next to it. Yeah, these cards can stay right next to each other. Although, I will say, if they ban Infernity Archfiend, we can totally get back Infernity Launcher. Because Infernity La Launcher is garbage without Archfiend. Um... No, this card cannot come back. Uh, eh, meh. If uh, eh. Into the Void is an interesting one. I think it can probably come back. Same thing with Upstart Goblin. Into the Void is Upstart Goblin, but you discard your entire hand at the end step. Um, it was only really good in Pendulum. Uh, yeah, it was only really good in Pendulum, and True Draco, because you weren't running hand traps in that anyway. Uh, you were just running straight trap cards, and with Pendulum, you were just trying to get as many spell counters on the field. So just, you know, giving up your entire hand to win next turn was fine. Uh, but are we going to have Infernity as a proper deck if Archfiend is bad? No, of course not. That's why it's still, it, it should stay where it is. Because the only, we, the only way it's getting unlimited is if we ban Archfiend. And Infernity as a deck doesn't work without Archfiend, because Infernity... Is Archfiend Turbo. Nobody plays in Infernity and Archfiend is at one. And Infernity got a new wave of support. Uh, there's an FTK that's legal with this card. Enough said. Um, uh, Magical Midfield Breaker can probably stay where it is. Do we really want to live in a world where Solemn Strike doesn't destroy cards anymore? Um, <laughs> that should, that, that's, that's just my opinion. Um, let's see if we ban Mystic Mind. Um, nah, it's really strong. Um, nah, it's really strong. Uh, un unless we banned Animadorned. Yeah, okay. Unless we banned Animadorned. If we banned Animadorned, we could definitely get this card back. Uh, because Misk is nothing without Animadorned. That's the only reason. Well, like, Misk is not anywhere near, uh, broken without Animadorned. Uh, nope. I mean, it's literally one of the best, if not the best, extender in the game. Uh, because it's a non-once-per-turn revive of a card from the graveyard. Uh, and if it was at 3, a lot of decks would play it at 3. Um. Uh, why is this card still banned? Uh, Empty Jar was a very messy strategy. Um, it's... I mean, Morphing Jar number 2, which 
has a, a doable FTK is uh, unbanned. Uh, Empty Jar will not be played with three copies of this card. Um, I don't know. It's it's meh to me. It doesn't seem that great. Uh, Morphing Jar number one is uh, about as good as Morphing Jar number two. So that's that's my opinion on it. Uh, empty jar in 2021. I mean, yeah. People would try to do it. It wouldn't be good, but people would try to do it. I guarantee you people would try to do empty jar. If if they had the ability to try and do empty jar. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Um, Night Assailant. Uh, yes, I get that you are a discard resource loop. If you are at any more than one copy. But this infinite resource loop, it, it ain't that good. Um, normally, I would say yes to this, but this is an incredibly toxic card. Uh, the reason that this card was limited was not the same reason that Upstart Goblin nor the same reason that uh, One Day of Peace were limited. Or sorry, uh, Into the Void were limited. One Day of Peace is uh one day of peace is limited because it was activate skip the battle phase draw card um i'm sure it could come back but do any of us want to live in a in a, in a world where someone can stall out three turns with one card I don't know. I really don't want to play pacifist Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, there are too many good level one cards in the game for one for one to ever come back. Uh, why is Night Assailant still limited? So it is mine. It just prevents you from taking damage, if I remember correctly. Uh, so Night Assailant is still limited for the same reason that Yadagarasu is still limited. Uh, for the same reason that it took them until 2019 for them to unban tribe infecting virus because uh konami doesn't know how to unlimit cards that aren't good um why is joker banned joker is at one copy uh speaking of joker joker is at two in the ocg and i honestly think he could be at three in the tcg uh the only reason that he's not in this why is why uh the only reason why he's not in the why is this card still limited again category is because he literally just got unlimited. Yadagarasu has a bad reason though. Yeah, Yadagarasu is limited because of Yadagarasu is limited because of or, or banned because of um Well, no easy way to say this. Yad is banned because of uh straight up like legacy what the card used to mean is why Yada is banned. It's no longer what the card actually is. Uh, Phantom Sky Blaster was a really good normal summon uh, in the Link era. Yada is infamous. Who is Night Assailant by comparison? Um. Well, I mean, there were decks that used uh, in the past, there were decks that used the Night Assailant loop. But at the same time, those decks were, like, really good for other reasons and not the the uh, the resource loop. Night Assailant should probably be at 3. Yada wasn't even the problem card. The deck uh, it was used in CED did all the work. That is true. Chaos Emperor Dragon did all the work. Um, Yada Lock is not as not that good like if you got rid of chaos emperor dragon yada would have stopped seeing play i mean compared to now um compared to now um i mean it's it's nothing really it's it's a card that saw play in goat format and probably that's why it was banned um i imagine goat was, was the reason why it was uh limited to one because it was like one of the best decks in goat format uh, used the hell out of this card. Um, 
Okay, Phantom Sky Blaster was limited because it produces a lot of tokens and uh, sometimes and doesn't limit you uh, in any way. Uh, the problem is, is that nine times out of ten, those tokens are going to be absolutely useless nowadays. Um, it was really, really strong in the early uh, Link era. Uh, and in the mid to late Link era. But, guess what we're not in anymore? That's fucking right, the Link era. Token Collector's about to go crazy, so yeah, the card's not that strong. Um, Due to the fact that you can loop three cards with this card, I don't think so. I don't think, uh... I don't think Cypher and Lord Omega can ever come back. Yo, um, reasoning was limited because of like Infernoid or something. That or, no, no, no. It was it was limited because of Reasoning Gate OTK, uh, which was the same reason that Monster Gate was limited. Um, back when uh, Return, uh, or, sorry, uh, not Return. Back when Return and Dimension Fusion were both still around. Uh, that is why this, uh, that is why, uh, reasoning was limited because people were using, like, chaos shit with that, and it was really, a really strong OTK strategy. Um, that being said, I feel like reasoning is a card that is kind of mystified, and people think that it is much stronger than it actually is nowadays. So I genuinely think it could probably come back, and nobody would notice that it even came back. It, Infernoids! Do Infernoids really need a buff? I mean, yeah, Infernoids are pretty bad right now. I could... I, I'd say they could use a buff. You know what the spicy tech I just thought of? What? I think the deck... I think the fucking B-Troopers could start to help change your bot, man, for a free extended draw. Hmm. Uh, Reasoning just dumps a lot of cards in the grave. Yeah. But so does Monster Gate. Uh, and Monster Gate is, like kind of better so uh i feel like monster gate uh yeah i feel like it just shouldn't be i feel like it shouldn't be limited anymore <laughs> i feel like the time for reasoning to be absolutely busted is uh long gone everyone is just gonna call one Okay, what needs to be hit for called to come back? It, what if nothing, it, what needs to be hit? Uh, there's nothing that really needs to be hit. It just nothing. Well, with, no, I think within it one, the only decks that can reliably play through multiple hand traps are basically the tier one or tier zero decks. I mean, there are quite a few cards that aren't tier one or tier zero. I mean, like uh, Phantom Knights can play through multiple hand traps. Yeah, they die to like one or two if you know where to hit them. Hmm. I've seen Secrets of Eternity, I've seen uh, Knights 2, Knights Infernoid's Knights. Wrath. I'd put it next to Gold Sark. Uh, yeah, I can go next to Gold Sark. Um, I do think, I do think, like, if and when, this is the same thing with, like, Instant Fusion. Instant Fusion is here because we have a replacement for it. Uh, yeah, I think Call By should go over here then. He makes a good point. Uh, if, if called by is limited because we have a slightly weaker called by, uh, and instant fusion is limited because we have a slightly weaker instant fusion, then, uh, why is red MD still banned, still limited? Red MD has an errata that makes it a hard once per turn and, and it's at three in the OCG. And, and Dragon Maids is a good deck and uses it in the TCG, in the OCG. Um, this card is really powerful and it's probably the most, if, if I'm honest with you. Red Reboot might be the most powerful card on the limited list that should probably stay limited. Red MD needs a doctor. <laughs> um Red Reboot is just a really strong card. Um un 
unnecessarily so. This card at three made it so trap decks couldn't play the game. Like at all. Uh, how many decks that used more than one or two trap cards were tier one? I'll tell you right now, it was one variant of a tier one deck, and that was Demise Striker. Um, which wasn't even the strongest variant of Striker at the time. Striker Orchest was. Um, and it wasn't even the strongest variant of Striker. It was uh, one of the weaker variants that got propelled into the only playable one by limiting of Striker cards. Um... And it hard lost to reboot. Uh, along with every other trap car, uh, trap deck in the game. Reboot is incredibly powerful. And it is completely worth the cost to activate. The fact that... The fact that you get another card off of reboot. Your opponent gets another card off reboot. Reboot doesn't even matter. Because you shut down trap effects for the rest of the game. Really strong. I can just say every time I I read Red, Be Red Reboot, I'm consistently confused as to why it's so good. It chops your life points and your opponent can set another copy of a card of the card you stopped. It's so good. Because there's a line of text on Red Reboot right at the bottom of that that says Your opponent cannot activate trap cards for the rest of the turn. 90% of trap decks will then just proceed to lose the game. Yeah, but in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! In modern Yu-Gi-Oh! It's for the rest of your turn, yes. But in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! How many turns does a deck need to win the game? If your answer is any more than just one. Yeah. 90% of decks that would be running reboot. Can just win the game then and there. And. Beyond that, we have cards like Access Code Talker uh, that will just get rid of your back row. Uh, it doesn't matter if your opponent can set a card from deck if you just get rid of it or end the game that turn. And Trap Decks not being able to play the game because of a single card um, uh, yeah. Remember, traps all of a sudden started seeing play again once we limited Red Reboot. Um, it wasn't just that traps got better. It was Red Reboot is really fucking strong. Um, let's see. Rhoda! Rhoda has been limited and unlimited so many times. I, I don't know what to say about it. Uh... I feel like Rota should stay at one just because it is a non once per turn search. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. It should probably stay where it is. I mean, the quality of warrior decks isn't that good right now. But Rota will always consistently be a good card because there will always eventually be another good warrior deck. Um, a card. This is kind of like when Rota came back in 2014. Rota came back for like a year, and then it got limited again at the end of the year. Um, Rota will always be a good card because there will always eventually be a next good warrior deck. Um, that's that's the reason why Rota should stay where it is. Uh, there will always be a strike Sky Striker. There will always be a Stateller uh, Knight. Uh, there will always be a Infernoble Knight. These decks will always be around. And Rhoda makes them very consistent. Um, so, we've got the Salaman Great Trio of Circle, Gazelle, and Mirage Stallio. I'll tell you right now, Circle and Gazelle 
can stay where they are. As a Salaman great player, it sucks that they're at one. But they're really fucking strong. They're really, really strong. Heroes still exist. Yeah, exactly. Um that being said, this card can this card can come back. There is A negligible difference between one uh, Mirage Stalio and three Mirage Stalio. Because you can add it back to your deck. Uh, Jack Jaguar legit recycles the card. So there's, there's such a small smidge of a difference between this card being at three copies and this card being at a single copy. Um, that's all I have to say. Um horse did nothing wrong yeah the horse was a hit to a deck that was already uh on its way out of the meta uh in toss format uh it is hard to say that salaman great wasn't the worst of the three like salaman great was a really good deck it was obviously meta but it got the fuck beaten out of it by by Thunder Dragon, by Striker, and by Orcus. It it always had like just barely the least amount of tops among the three. Uh and it like sort of switched places with like Thunder Dragon and Orcus and whatnot. But the the big thing was that the deck died to Nib and all the other ones didn't. Uh Orcus didn't die to Nib. Striker could just not worry about nib most of the time because they didn't really summon that much anyway uh and oh thank you tairitsu or tyre yeah tairitsu one two three please tell me i got that right uh thank you for the follow um the other three decks had their ways of playing around nibiru S salaman great just didn't it needed to get to five summons to keep on playing the game and it still does. Uh, so it was... Obviously it didn't need a hit. Because it was already on its way out. The thing about Toss is that every single one of those decks dance around each other. When it came to balance. Yeah, but nearing the end... Nearing the end of Toss format. Nearing the end of Toss format. Like, at the beginning of Toss format, right? Before Nibiru was a thing. Solomon Great was really good. Because it recurred its shit really well. Um, uh, and it didn't, it didn't worry about getting nibbed that much because it could get, uh, well, it didn't worry about getting nibbed because nib didn't exist at that. And then Gazelle got hit and then, uh, Circle got hit. And all of a sudden the deck is a little bit less consistent. It's a little bit below the other three. It's not got the power of, it's not got the splash ability of Orcus. It's not got the, the engine of Striker and it's not got the absolute ridiculousness of uh thunder dragon at the time like Dra thunder dragon link at the time uh danger thunder dragon was absolutely ridiculous then nibiru comes out danger thunder dragon isn't really viable until about a month later when seifert uh when uh starly's dragon seifert was uh starting to be messed around with and all of a sudden they could play around nib uh or play through a nib um striker dominates at this point uh also at this point uh, Mermaid had been banned, so Orcus is seeing a little less play than Striker. Uh, the deck is good. It can keep up. The problem is it dies to Nibiru. Then, we're getting towards the end of the year. Stri uh, Striker and Orcus are still holding strong. Thunder Dragon right there with them. But we're starting to see Salamangrate fall off. And then the ban list comes and it hits all three of them. And Thunder Dragon immediately falls to the the complete absence of uh, meta with its boss monster completely annihilated. Uh, the deck is in shambles. Same thing with Sky Striker with the banning of uh, Engage. The deck just doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, Orcus is still around, but it's absolutely um, not that strong. And... 
Salaman Great loses its engine card, uh, or it's 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 one of its major cards in uh, Mirage Stalio, and it doesn't hurt the deck that much. But at the same time, uh, the deck from there falls off. Did you need? Did you know Queen and Mickle Nickelback made a song together? I did not know that, but I'm also not gonna watch it. Um, eventually Orcus got filled with bullet holes. Uh, TD got their Patriarch taken away. Striker, you know, yeah. Striker, Striker has more cards on the band list, or Striker had more cards on the band list than Orcus did. Um, and Salad, in theory, should be on top. Salamand Great, on in theory, should be should be on top. The problem is, is that Nibiru existed, and uh, yeah, Nibiru existed. That's pretty much it. Like, uh, uh, and they lost one of their better engine cards. Uh, that being Mirage Stalio. Uh, Mirage Stalio did help out the deck quite a bit, even if the deck only ran it at one or two in most builds. Uh, that's why I say that Mirage Stalio, like. It, it being at one is essentially it being at three for the deck because the deck already ran it at one or two anyway. So, yeah. Um, uh, the problem for the deck was just it, it struggled to keep up after the initial limiting of Gazelle and Circle. And then uh, it really got it, it really got punched in the face with the uh, the banning of uh, or with the the bringing out of Nibiru and the banning of uh, Mirage Stalio. Also, I'm not sure about Scapegoat. I think Scapegoat could probably come back. Scapegoat is a card that was banned when it was hard to F to OTK decks, and that's kind of not a problem anymore. But at the same time, do we really want to live in a world where Scapegoat can be at three? I don't know. Scapegoat used to give decks like really easy access to... Uh, like an easy uh like link four but i just don't think that's gonna be a thing anymore because like decks can uh oh wait this card can totally come back to three hold up that's the wrong spade decks uh they're just not that uh that that strong anymore i just realized mirage salio is a salad uh card that doesn't have an effect that uses itself to exceed summon itself yeah um yeah uh i i'm not sure on scapegoat i feel like nowadays scapegoat would just get popped it'd be used in it might be used in grind decks but it probably won't be it does get you a free link four but at the same time you have to dedicate an amount of your extra deck that a lot of decks aren't comfortable uh dedicating and it's also bad uh, because access code talker is like the go-to link four for a lot of decks and a lot of decks just have removal in general. And if scapegoat gets removed, you've all, all you've done is bought yourself a turn. Uh, but I could see a, I could see an argument for why scapegoat, scapegoat stays limited. Uh, I feel like Sekka's Light could come back to three. Sekka's Light promoted creative deck building. Uh, and it's kind of sad to see it, like, not exist. Uh, because Konami was just like, oh, creative deck building? Fuck that shit. And then threw it in the garbage. I think it was genuinely limited because of Ada, but Ada also lost, like, what? Like, a Ada also lost fucking, uh, Block Dragon on that list as well, I think. So I don't know. Um, Servant. Ah, oh, yes. Servant was hitting the fringes of meta, if I remember correctly. Why did Sekka's Light get banned? Because Konami's a pussy. Uh, that, that's, that's why. Konami's scared of shit. They don't... They're fucking cowards. They don't like people, like, having cards that have, uh, big, uh, really strong effects. And Sekka's Light is a really strong effect. Um... Servant is an interesting one. Uh, it was hit it, at the end of Toss Format. Uh, when literally everything got hit. And then they were like, oh yeah, by the way, let's hit the fringes of meta too. So they hit uh, Servant of Endymion. Um, for no reason, because 
pen wasn't amazing at the time. Pen probably would have been meta for a little bit, but it was probably going to be quickly shuffled out of the way. Uh, they also hit Electromite on this list, which didn't make sense to me either, because Electromite was also bad. Or Well, uh, it did make sense to me that Electromite got banned, but it didn't make sense to me that Servant then got limited. Servant can stay at 1, they hard draw it anyway, fair. Konami likes to future-proof the meta. Yeah, I don't like when Konami future-proofs the meta. If the meta is going to change, let the meta change by your ban list. Hit the shit that's... Hit the shit that's good. Don't hit the shit that's not. Let the shit that's not have a chance. Don't just hit... Like... Like... If you kill everything... If you kill everything that is good at the end of the year right now. Like, you kill Dragon Link, you kill... Dino, kill fucking uh, prank kids, kill all of it at the end of the year. Don't then go randomly ban uh, Madolche Messengelato because Messengelato because Madolche will be the next meta deck. Don't randomly ban like uh, uh, fucking. Don't randomly hit like uh, what you call it, like fucking. Uh, Emperor, like, Infernoble Knight, Emperor Charles, because, oh, all of a sudden, Infernoble Knight is a, a deck that's viable. It's, uh, it does not make sense to me <laughs> to preemptively hit a deck. Especially considering Fast Approaching was the stuff that was going to unlock the rest of Yu-Gi-Oh! And that was going to kind of put a a damper on Pendulum's uh, title is really strong because other decks would be able to compete again. I'd comment on the fact, though, that Electromite is still banned even though Metal Foes have a lot of new friends. Uh, but the limited li but uh, this is a limited list discussion. Electromite is banned because it's really strong. Electromite has been banned multiple times. I think that's a marker of a card that is really strong. Not like Dryden ban, where it was banned because of another deck. Electromite was banned because of Electromite. And Electromite is always banned because of Electromite. Um, we can keep, uh, we can keep set rotation where it is. Um, I feel like Skill Drain can stay where it is too. Um, I feel like Drones, uh, is a really good card and should probably stay where it is. Um, it's a little bit too easy of a, uh, card to use, if you know what I mean. Um, it's just a tad bit strong. Um, same thing with multi-rolls, although multi-rolls could probably also be banned. Uh, in all honesty. And I don't think a whole lot of people would complain. Uh, we could, we could ban multi-rolls and people probably wouldn't, uh, complain at us for banning multi-rolls. And it could probably unlock a lot more striker cards if we banned it as well. Set Rotation is another unique card, but unlike Sekka's Light, uh... Unlike Sekka's Light, uh, uh, another, uh, it can get kind of toxic. Yeah, true. Um, I honestly feel like, uh, it can probably stay where it is, but it could also probably come back to two if we limited slash banned cards. Like, if, if we ban this and we limit, uh, Kagari again, we could probably get one more engage back, but I don't think it's happening. Electromite powers up the entire game mechanic to uh, to great heights. Not many cards can do that. Very true. Very, very true. The card single-handedly uh, makes Pendulum good. Uh, let's see, shall we? Um, slash draw. Just ban it. I don't care. Kagari to one? Hmm. Uh, just ban it, please. Just get rid of fucking Slash Draw. Why do we need it? Like, 
at one, it is essentially banned because the card cannot like function at one. So I guess keep it if you want to like have let new players fall into the trap of slash draw being a good card. But I don't know. It's it's not good. It it doesn't do anything at one. Uh Takatombor. Or sorry, this is not Takatomborg. This is uh This is Terratop. Terratop is an interesting one. It it serves as two bodies on one summon. What does Slash Draw do? It's an FTK card. Um Light Swarms can run uh, one copy of Slash Draw, but it adds it, it adds all those cards back to the deck. Um Oh, it's a joke, my bad. <laughs> um Yeah, Terra Top can stay where it is. This is a card that I was question uh questioning, but it, it It's really strong. Like just getting two level threes nowadays is actually really good. Um The card isn't super broken. But it's also really, really good. Like, getting to run three Terratop, one Takatomborg is uh, really good in a lot of decks. Because it doesn't limit you in any way. Again, almost every card on this list can be brought back with an errata that uh, changes it. Except for, like, the these cards, like, multi-roll and... Uh, uh, final countdown can't come back, but a lot of these cards can. Uh, Terratop is a one card BA link. Uh, Ter Cherubini, yeah, it's a, it's a one card Cherubini. I think it was be I think it was limited for being a one card Dante, but it is a one card Cherubini. Uh, Mirage Stalio is generic, so Terratop can make it. That is true. I mean, you can change Pot of Greed to not be bannable. That is true. You can change everything to be not bannable. Uh, actually, no. I don't think Terratop could... Well, yeah, if you limit it to Wind Monsters, but that's it. That's not a fair... That's why it's not on here. Because literally any of these could be uh, limited so that they uh, are eroded in such a way that they could come back. But do we really want the cards to be eroded? Like, do we really want Chaos Emperor Dragon to be eroded? Did we? Did we really want Chaos Emperor Dragon back that, like, that bad that it was eroded into unplayability? If Terratop locked you into Wind Monsters, like all the other speed roids, it could come back. That is fair. And I feel like Terratop is one of the few cards that I could accept an errata on. Uh, Terratop coming back to, like, one copy is uh or to, to like three copies but you can only use it with wind is acceptable and i feel like there's a place that they could ship a teratop errata like you could ship a teratop errata in the new speedroid set and i don't think anybody would complain but free but free crystal wing dragon yeah fair um, quick fix. Let me refresh my memory on quick fix. I think quick fix like actually can't come back. I could be wrong though. It's a spiral card. There we go. Uh, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one spiral gear from your deck to your hand. Uh, if this card is in your graveyard, uh, and you control Spiral Super Agent, you can discard one card, special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Mm. I feel like with Master Plan, Band, and Resort at 1, Quick Fix can probably come back to 2 or 3. Spiral will never be, uh, can never be good again. I don't think Spiral will be good again with 3 Quick Fix. Until they get, like, Resort back... And with Master Plan banned, I I don't think so. I don't like the Irata. Uh, I don't like Iratas because uh, it tarnishes the rep reputation of good cards. It makes pre makes old pre errata copies useless, so you gotta buy new versions. There are exceptions though. That is true. Um, 
I think, uh, I think Quick Fix is fine to come back with, uh, with Drone back and Resort at one where it should stay at all times. I don't think Spiral would be absolutely broken with three Quick Fix. I'd like to deck, I'd like the deck to not be useless. Union Carrier would be a great, re uh, recipient of this, of an errata. That is true. Just make Union Carrier Union, like, light exclusive. Make it, make it light monster exclusive so that you, so that, uh, Union decks can actually do stuff. Uh, cause, like, Light Machine is the only, like, change the requirements so that it only sets a, a Light Machine monster or something like that. That you can only use it, like, find a way that you can only use it in Light Machine decks. Light machines like ABC, yeah, essentially, because that's what a that's that's what it was meant for. It was meant to be ABC support. Ah, uh, Striker Dragon can stay where it is, probably. The card is a bit too strong of a uh, like for Dragon Link. The arrows are really good, and uh, the card it searches is really strong too. Okay, see, Tempest is an interesting one. Because if I remember correctly, Tempest isn't that strong. It, it searches a hand trap. I forget what its in-hand effect was. Uh, adds a dragon from your deck to your hand. Yeah, Tempest can... Uh, Tempest can stay where it's at. It's good in, like, one deck. But the reason I want Tempest to stay where it's at is because I know if we get more copies of Tempest back... Um... I don't think Tempest is that strong. I think Tempest is actually quite bad. But I want them to, l to, to keep an eye on Tempest and keep it where it is because, um, uh, Romulus to Dragon Link die. Okay, fair. Fair. But, uh, Tempest isn't strong. Wind is an attribute. It technically isn't that strong. It's got a good home in, like, pure Dragoonity, in, like, uh, pure, uh, pure Armed Dragon Thunder. And those decks could certainly, would certainly like more copies of, uh, of, uh, Tempest. But I kind of want Tempest to stay where it is because I know if we get three Tempest, we're never getting any of the other, uh, we are not getting any of the other Thunder Dragons back for a very long time. Or any of the uh, other Dragon Rulers back for a very long time. So I would like to see where they take... Uh, I I'd like to see this card remain at one copy despite it being not a like, limit-worthy card at all. Uh, because I'd like to see more of the Dragon Rulers come back. Specifically, like, maybe Blaster. Uh, cause I feel like Blaster isn't that strong. Um, so I'm gonna put this at the bottom of, sh of should stay where it is. Because I think it should stay where it is. But, I think it should only stay where it is. I see we have a Mermail player in the chat. Um, it should only stay where it is. Because I want more Dragon Rulers back. And I know that they won't bring more Dragon Rulers back. If we have Tempest at three copies. I could easily see, see Blaster coming back next. Yeah. We were all surprised when Blast or when Tempest came back, but then people like started trying to experiment with Bla with Tempest and realizing that it wasn't good. Um yeah. I don't know. I have my hot take that I did on Twitter about the the Dragon Rulers. Um I will stand by that take as the deck, the entire, like, all of the cards for Dragon Rulers could come back to one, and I don't think the deck would be that great. Break it down for me. Why should Defissure and Macrocosmos stay banned? Howdy, by the way. They're not banned. They're limited. But they should stay limited because we have Dimension Shifter around. And Dimension Shifter is just worse uh, Defissure and Macrocosmos. And there are still decks that, that hard die to both of them. Uh, to that one card. So I feel like the card should stay where it is. Because 
we have a weaker version of it and people still um people st uh, like cards still get hard fucked by that weaker version of it uh remember that remember that uh heroes were really powerful for a long time because dark law was a card so uh, I don't know. I feel like these two cards should stay where they are because they are more than two turns of, a, of an effect for a hand trap that 90% of 90% uh, of uh, non-meta decks of, uh, of rogue decks get hard fucked by. Imagine f uh, Flunderies with multiple Defissure or Macrocosmos. Yeah, exactly. Um... Although I think I think uh, I think Flunderies would prefer uh, Deep Fissure over Macro uh, because Deep Fissure Deep Fissure uh, doesn't send the spell traps, and they would actually like their spell traps to go to the graveyard uh, so that they can um, banish them from the graveyard with their own effects and add them back to hand later. So, I, I, I'm not actually sure. I think they stick to uh, Dimension Shifter. Because there is uh, a reason for them to want their cards in the graveyard. Because one of the Flunderies does banish from the graveyard. Um, at least that's my opinion. Um, this card should never come back to more than one copy. There are too many good field spells nowadays. If we just banned all the good field spells, it could come back. But, that's a lot of field spells to ban, for no fucking reason. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, I gotta be honest with you, this card can stay where it is. Um, uh, there was a time where I would advocate for this card to come back. But, uh, nowadays, I've realized that, uh, like, the Synchro Engine in general is really powerful hyper librarian is worse saryuja that is true but the synchro engine like keeps on getting more and more good cards um and i would be slightly worried uh about synchro having something like hyper librarian considering that synchro keeps on getting more and more cards i would be worried about hyper librarian coming back to three uh, but terraforming helps Mystic Mind players. Yeah, Mystic, Mystic Mind players can get bent. Uh, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> uh, Trickstar Light Stage. Uh, hot, uh, hot take. Trickstar Light, Light Stage can come back to 2 or 3 and nobody would notice it came back to 2 or 3. Like, like absolutely nobody would notice. What, what are people going to do? Play Trickstar again? Haha, <laughs> very funny. What are people going to do? Like, actually play Trickstar again with 2 or 3 light stage? I don't think that's happening. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I'd like to say this is the same thing with, uh... This is the, this is the same thing with, uh... Our good friend TG Hyper Librarian. Nice to see you, Amika. Uh, our good friend TG Hyper Librarian was banned because it was too powerful with multiple cards. Um, our, our good friend Trishula is also too powerful with multiple cards. Um, so I think it should stay where it's at. Because it's really, really strong the more copies you have. Uh, and hand loop decks would love to have Trishula at 3. Um... Yeah, it's, it's just really strong. I don't know the veracity of those hand loop decks. I don't know how actually powerful those hand loop decks would be. But... Do we really want to test it? Because we can test it. Um, I just would rather not. You can search and uh, cut back row, cut off back row with light stage. That is true, but Trickstar isn't good anymore. 
And Trickstar won't be good with more light stage. Lysothogram can come back to three. Uh, Lysothogram came to one. Saw play for an hour. Uh, then the level one dino came back, came out and people started cutting Lysothogram because it wasn't worth it. And then True King of All Calamities got banned and it really wasn't worth it. Uh, so Lysothogram... Lysothogram can stay where it's at. Uh, uh, can can come back. It's it's. It would be a really cool play enabler in Dino, and Dino probably wouldn't run it at three because it wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, that's that's my opinion on Lysothogram. <laughs> uh, another good one. Why is Wall of Revealing Light still? Why is Wall of Revealing Light still uh, limited? Personally, I just think the extra is way too tight these days for deep draw like Hyper Librarian decks or Hand Loop Trish to do much uh, to make a uh, relevant splash. You know, you've got a good point there. The extra deck is way too deep. Um, Hand Loop is kind of bad. Uh, you know what? You know what? You've got a you've got a good point. Um, I, I think these cards could probably come back. Uh, maybe, maybe if other things were, no, I think they could, they could maybe come back. These are, these are like a hard, maybe these will be the, at the bottom of, uh, I actually, I'll put these here. I think cards that are stronger than them would have to be banned for them to come back. Like maybe if Hulk was banned, these cards could come back. Um, cause you can life equalizer into, uh, or into the void. I think it's called where you pay a hundred and draw the, uh, difference of life points into the void. Into the void doesn't work like that. What does life equalizer do? Doesn't life equalizer like, uh, Yo, you going to the corny tomorrow? I'm going to monkey no. flip my way to the top. Cool. Life equalizer. Like, uh, okay. Just ban life equalizer. We got a both players' life points become 3,000. Okay, that, that makes sense. If like if life equalizer is the problem, then ban life equalizer. Also, life equalizer no, is not the problem because wasn't this limited way back in GOAT format when it was actually being used as a floodgate? Wasn't this being, like, used all the way back in, like... Wasn't this limited way back then? I swear, Wall of Revealing Light was uh, limited all the way back then. Because MST was at 2 or something. Yeah, MST... No, MST was at 1. Um, uh, it was for last turn reasons. Yeah, but last turn is banned. I feel like Wall of Revealing Light shouldn't be, a th shouldn't be around anymore. Uh, mainly because, like, what are you gonna do that kills with, uh, Wall is an extremely old ba ban. It is an extremely old limit. I feel like it should just come back. If, like, e if Life Equalizer is the problem, ban Life Equalizer. Or limit Life Equalizer. Life Equalizer is obviously the more, like, pretentious card. Um, I just don't think, uh... Hope for escape, not into the void. All right, let's see hope for escape. Hope for escape says uh, if your opponent is at... Okay, but this will just get ashed in current Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, wait, wait. This is not how this would work. Hold up. So... If you, if, you, okay, well, no, it is how it would work. You draw, you draw a bunch of cards, yeah. But, like, that's not good anymore. <laughs> that's really not good anymore. That would just get ashed in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. And sure, drawing all those cards would be really cool. But I think with both of these cards at three, I think people still wouldn't do it. Because, uh, Wall of Revealing Light is unsearchable. And while Hope for Escape is, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's worth it. I really don't think it's worth it. I think Wall of Revealing Light can come back and nobody will care. Life Equalizer, maybe, but uh, 
Drawing not good anymore, but uh, TG at one. Drawing drawing is good, but not when you're paying a shit ton of life points for a two card draw engine that can just get ashed. This is one. This is a one time draw, opposed to a uh, draw every time you do a thing. Uh, TG isn't limited uh, because it dies to Ash. Because it doesn't die to Ash. If you if you Ash a TG Hyper Librarian, they will just summon another Synchro and draw again. If you Ash uh, Hope for Escape, what do you do? What do you do now that you've paid enough life, uh, like a massive amount of life points? This doesn't seem like a thing that should be limited anymore. Gonna be honest. I don't even care if you can draw a bunch of cards with it. <laughs> Let people run three copies of two trap cards that don't do anything so that they can get this bad combo off. It's usually Burn or Exodia deck. Well, Exodia's bad. Um, and Burn... Is not as viable as it once was. So I don't, uh. I don't know. Ash Blossom's Exodia. Uh, I found out why Blasting the Ruins FTK. Do we really think Blasting the Ruins FTK is, uh, like super viable nowadays? I mean, I suppose it is, but you have to get 30 cards into the graveyard. I don't know. I feel like it's not that good. So they life equalizer into enough for blasting the ruins and then kill. Why wasn't this unlimited when red reboot was at three, by the way? I don't know. Doesn't seem that great to me, to be honest with you. <laughs> I feel like people would find other ways to do what they want. Um, I'm probably going to leave it at why is this still banned. Old school Yu-Gi-Oh! OTKs don't seem as strong. It seems very fragile. Um... What is this? What is this card? Is this another copy of Draco Slayer? Oh, is that Draco face off? Hold up. Let me like actually open up my limited list. This is a spell card. Search by name. Should be near the bottom. Oh, that's Zodiac Barrage. My bad. Okay, so... That is Zodiac Barrage. Yeah, keep it where it is, honestly. Zodiac is too strong right now. Um, Konami was right when they limited Barrage. We didn't see it at the time. But Konami was right. Barrage Barrage was a problem. Also, Rat Pier is a one card Mega Collapse. I feel like uh, that should be enough reason alone for Rat Pier to stay where it is. Rat P uh, Mega Collapse plus Zeus. Uh, so you can go either route. Uh, and then face uh, Barrage being a one card Rat Pier or a one card Zeus. Um, is really good. Um, yeah, it's, it, they're just both really strong. <laughs> All right. So this is the list. Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's pretty fair. 
I have tried my best to be as fair as possible. Uh, in conclusion, uh, Konami, please don't print banners alchemy deck from GX. I'm begging you. I'm begging uh, my, on my hands and knees. Just let me play Chaos Distill. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, hat. Oh, please print. Wait, like, hat. 90% of banners alchemy deck is in the game right now. Okay, that being said, I think that I think the list is complete. Um Most of those cards, yeah, most of those cards exist already. Uh oh, I vanished chat instead of what I was trying to vanish. I was trying to vanish this. 